Americans having faith in Congress uh, and, uh, of course, the lawmakers, uh, many of the millionaires. Uh, I'd like to get your reaction on that. And then maybe you can tell us if that is a reflection on how it maybe ties in with Obama's approval rating, which a recent poll actually is suggesting that he would not be reelected. Well, I would say that the recent poll results are due to the fact that there are thousands of families in this winter season who will be celebrating the holidays living literally in tents all throughout the United States. And people know that there are thousands and thousands of empty houses all through the United States as well. There are empty houses all across the United States and there are people who have been evicted from their homes because they can't find work and they're unable to pay their mortgages. And this situation is, the, is, is what people are facing. They're facing poverty and, and horrific, the horrific reality that in the, in the country with the richest top 1% of any country in the world, people are still suffering. And when people see that, how can they approve of Congress? How can they approve of their government officials? You know, they've taken polls that say 12% of the U.S. population favors communism over capitalism, but only 11% approves of Congress. That's how low it is. With all the McCarthyism, communism is more popular than the U.S. Congress. That shows that things are beginning to change and people are standing up for once. And that's why this, you know, they've, they've attempted to declare the Occupy Wall Street movement over many times. But it's certainly not over. Uh, people are in the streets. There seems to be a confrontation all the time. And it's continuing, and the crisis will only continue until, until the forces of the 1% of the top ruling elite of Wall Street are forced to step down. Well, uh, it, you make a very good point there. And Sherwood Roth here, because, uh, first of all, it doesn't make sense, Salad Mopin, does it, when they're planning on a repression, in this case in point, let's mention the Occupy protesters, which is going to cost money because it's going to bring in, what, more forces who are going to work probably overtime. And... Give, give us your comments on that and also a reaction to whether the U.S. administration is getting the point here or why isn't it that they are? Because uh, from many corners, uh, it is said that the uh, civil unrest is perhaps arriving in the U.S. if it hasn't on, uh, already in different uh, counties, perhaps. Well, I would say, first of all, on to the whole issue with, with whether the money is there, there is plenty of money that the U.S. government has. The vast majority of it goes to bomb countries, to set up military bases all around the world, and maintain empire for the defense of Wall Street's profits. I'm all for raising taxes on the rich, don't get me wrong, but it's a question of how that money is spent. They need to end the wars around the world, and then the money would be there. They're cutting programs massively, but yet they always have more money for the police and more money for means of repression. And with regards to the whole issue of, 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 of the prison system, uh, the prisons and the police are largely being privatized now. Uh, you have private contractors in the military. All over Iraq, you have private military contractors who, who Wall Street banks are getting kickbacks from these things, whereas the social programs are being cut because these things actually go to help people and not to help big banking institutions and not to help the ruling elite. Uh, there's a great fear on the part of the ruling elites right now because they fear the fact that people are waking up and are furious with the facts, the conditions that they've forced upon them. Things are beginning to change and we're going to see a tightening of the apparatus and a tight tightening of the violence and this National Defense Authorization Act is an incarnation of that. They're trying to scare people and they're preparing, they're bracing for the fact that the Occupy Wall Street movement is just the beginning. What began in Tunisia uh, in, in January um, uh, and in Egypt it was just the beginning of a global revolt against the, the monopoly power of the ruling elite. And they're trembling right now, and they're going to do everything they can to restrain the people from taking what's rightly theirs, their seat as the rulers of the world. Right. And we're talking about taxpayer money, Sherwood Ross. And Salab said, Maupin, let me bring you in here to get the last word from you. Uh, where do you see this going in terms of uh, how the Occupy movement is going to uh, occur in terms of its intensity and keeping the momentum and having any say uh, when it comes up to the uh, votes that's supposed to, I guess, count, if you agree with it, in 2012? Well, um, there was a saying among uh, activists and revolutionaries in this country about 100 years ago, and they said, if voting could change anything, it would be illegal. And I think a lot of people believe that, because when we go to the polls, we have the choice of a Democrat who supports the wars, supports uh, repressing people and, and is in the pocket of Wall Street, or a Republican who supports the wars, supports continuing repressing people, and is also in the pocket of Wall Street. 
And the beautiful thing about the Occupy Wall Street movement is that people are no longer uh, channeling their anger into uh, the useless uh, stage and, uh, called elections. And people are pouring into the streets, their feet, their feet are their votes, and they're out in the street, and they're confronting the state and the police, and they're beginning to see that this idea that this is the freest country in the world and there's total freedom in the U.S. is a deception. And they're ready to go out and they're ready to fight to make it, make it not a deception, but to make it reality and to make a world where people are indeed free, but they realize it won't come through voting. It will be, come through being in the streets, for standing up, and from, from engaging in a struggle for true democracy.